Hi, it's uh, Joe Mazumda of Exploration Insights at the March 2022 uh, Metals Investment Forum conference. It is live this year, but uh, now we are doing the backstage interviews. And with me right now is the CEO of High Gold Mining, Darwin Green. Darwin, how's it going? Good. Pleasure to be here, Joe. We can shake hands and we're not wearing masks, which is encouraging. <laughs> uh, we're all vaccinated, thankfully. So um, high gold mining, you know, focus on Alaska, but also with projects in Northern Ontario. You finished the Alaska program and this week announced the last results from it. So let, let's say like out of that 2021 program, what have you learned? And uh, how are you gonna take uh, the project going forward, which is Johnson Track Deposit in uh, Southern Eastern Alaska? Yeah, okay, I, well, there's two primary elements to last year's program. One was sort of growth of the main deposit itself. Um, which is called the JT deposit. JT deposit, yeah, where we have just under 900,000 ounces gold equivalent in indicated and inferred at about 10 grams per ton gold equivalent. So a high grade, really attractive deposit. We now have two seasons under our belt of drilling since we last did that resource. So we're going to- Which up is about, what you said, 27,000 meters or was that? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, about that 27,000 meters we've completed within that deposit environment. And so we've been quite successful being able to expand the, the strike and down plunge extent of that mineralization. So I've been very happy with that. And we'll, we're going to generate an updated resource estimate here in the coming weeks, months, uh, you know, before we get back out in the field. So that was objective one, and we're happy with how that's progressing. Objective number two was to better evaluate the other prospects on the greater property, because it's quite a large property. And you know, we have several, you know, 10, 12 kilometers of sort of trend, if you will, where we've got a variety of different prospects. 2021 was our first year of actually drill testing any of those. And we, uh, I mean, we, we hit a very spectacular drill hole at DC. It was one of the top 10 drill holes globally last year, 6.4 meters of plus 500 grams per ton gold with nice silver. So, you know, we, we really kind of validated our concept that there was more out there. Last year's drilling at that was, was really just a first pass test to see, let's go test a couple of these prospects, see what's out there. And, um, super excited with what we found and this year is going to be all about following up on that. So in terms of what you're planning for 2022, uh, like how much of a proportion of it may be to expand JT further or to say, okay, that's good for JT. Now let's find another one and put a second phase of drilling in some of these like, like your uh, difficult Creek area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're working on those plans right now and we'd expect to have those finalized in terms of budget and drill plan program for the year here in the, in the coming weeks. Um, but what I can say is that we will continue to keep stepping out on the deposit itself. So it's not like it's done. It, it's still got growth and we're going to continue to expand that. That said, I think from a market perception of the project, if we can demonstrate that the difficult Creek and Milkbone area is actually that we're onto another deposit proper, I, I think that's going to probably have the most dramatic impact in terms of valuation. So we're going to be hitting that quite hard. Uh, while at the same time steadily expanding the deposit, as well as seeing if there's other ones of those out there, right? There's a number of other prospects. Right. These are just the first ones we tested last year, so we have more to test. Uh, but I think uh, Milkbone DC is an area of, of, of real high potential that we're, we're pretty excited to get back to. So um, Alaska is obviously very seasonal, and uh, because of, I guess, the assay, how long it takes the assays to come out, we're still talking about assay results now, <laughs> yeah. when normally we may yeah. not be. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you have another project to, to mitigate some of that news flow uh, in, in northern Ontario. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we have a very large land position within the Timmins camp, and most of your viewers are probably where Timmins aware that Timmins is the number one gold jurisdiction in Canada, over hundred million ounce endowment in that camp. And we have, you know, we've got three properties right now. What we're drilling is something called Monroe Croesus. Um, it's a claim or a area that's become quite active. Actually, our neighbors include uh, Mayfair who have a 2 million ounce gold deposit right, that's, that's growing. Fen Gib. Fen Gib, yeah. which we know well. It's about, the deposit sits about 1500 meters from our, our, our claim boundary. We're right on trend from that. McEwen Mining's operation, Black Fox is on the other side of us, about 1500 meters away. And then a little bit further down the road is Mineta. Mineta's Mineta. deposit, which eight and a half million ounces and growing. So there's a lot of activity in that area right now. What we've done is, um, it was a very focused plan to consolidate around our past producing Croesus mine, where these samples Ooh, came from. Yes, yeah. uh, so this is for our audience. 
<laughs> yeah, and a really, really neat history to this. You know, this was found in sort of early 1900s, 1910, 1911. It was put into production. They mined this type of grade that was just, you know, incredibly high grade. I think the head grade was about 95 grams per ton, and it didn't include the direct shipment ore that they'd hand cob and put in steel boxes and send, send to the mint. Um, obviously, museum quality specimens, uh, one of the showpieces at the Royal Ontario Museum um, from that mine. But, you know, in our view, one of the biggest challenges with that property is it was fragmented land ownership all the way back to when this was first found. So when you think about it, you got this patchwork of little postage stamp claims that have been that way for a hundred years. Nobody was motivated to really do any serious exploration because you you only have such a small land package. So a lot of hard work, but the last 24 months, we've done 14 separate deals to consolidate and, and dramatically expand our land position. Uh, a lot of old prospects on that land position. And now this year, right now, we're right in the middle of getting out, taking a first pass test of that. So uh, how much are you drilling? Uh, 8,000 meters uh, right now. Um, we did a little program just before Christmas, uh, and then we're just carrying on with that right now. It's a, that was 3,000 or so, and this is 8,000. So it's a nice first pass approach. Kind of like what we did in, J at, in Alaska with JT. We just kind of wanted to kind of march across and see what we see. Is this and then like 150, 200 meter holes? Or? Yeah, in that, yeah, on average. Yeah, a bunch of holes. Some are shorter, some are longer, but that, right. that sort of thing. And it's a mix of targets, right? Where, you know, it would be very nice to find more of this. Yeah. Um, we do think there's a real high grade environment, obviously, on the property, but we also have indications of bulk tonnage, low grade type and systems. You know, we're right along the same structural break that hosts Fen Gibb. Um, very near to the Dester Porcupine Fault system as well. So we're kind of, we've got a mix of targets uh, and this is, a, you know, testing some of them, not all. We've got a big IP survey we're doing across the property as well, the entire property. Right. So certain that targets. That works well? Is that well, for, we think it'll work well for some of the more bulk tonnage type, type targets. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Um, we, we think it will be a nice tool to, to you know, another another layer of data that will support our airborne data and our geological data. We've done a lot of compilation work. We've done a, a very sort of uh, in-depth targeting exercise where we took all the key attributes that, from the neighboring deposits and oh, deposits right. within the belt, put them in, and then you look at all your prospects and you're looking for similar elements, sort of like AI, but doing it manually. <laughs> Not artificial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got potentially a program maybe at least as big as last year uh, at, at the J uh, Johnson track. And then you've got 8,000 meters for, for a first pass. And you might have another program in 2022 also in your Northern Ontario properties. So how are you funded of, of for, uh, you know, your, your, your multiple programs here? Yeah, well, we're very well funded. You know, we, we, uh, we entered this year with 23 million or something in the bank. Uh, we're spending a couple million in Ontario, and that leaves us with a, quite a strong treasury for uh, for Alaska. Um, you know, it's it. We were able to put some money in the till on the back of those good results at Difficult Creek. Uh, so we did that at a, I think a buck sixty or buck sixty three. So we're definitely a good value opportunity for anybody who wants to pick up a stock today. It's uh, we're well priced and because uh, we're, we're we're trading below that. Um, so yeah, well funded to execute what we want to do. I mean, it's great to have the two you know, two fronts that we're operating on. This gives you exposure, just that pure raw new discovery stuff. Great geological real estate, you know, a camp and district with pedigree. Um, and you just, you just gotta go out there and drill, right? Yeah. But your risk is, that's higher risk drilling. But, but no one's really putting a lot of value on this. If well, you, yeah, hit, you hit, you hit, yeah. you hit that, you're definitely gonna get a response in the share price. <laughs> I mean, I think this one was 17,000 ounces per ton. It's like, yeah, it's, there's some grade there. Uh, <laughs> It's obviously a small target, but you know it's it's a, it's a really neat setting. Meanwhile, you know you, you you're, it's really good value backstop by what we have in Alaska. We're going to have new metallurgy out soon. And we'll have a resource estimate, which only a point in time. You know, it's still growing, but it's it's established. We've gone from here to here. Next milestone, and we'll keep growing on that. We're um, you know, and it, we're also you know it's going to be pedal you know fully depressed on, you know, on, on exploration right now, foot on the gas for the exploration, don't want to slow that down. But it's also time to start looking at some of the uh, more 
development aspects, initiating thoughts on how you might develop our project in Alaska. Right. And, and, and that originally was talked about being a direct ship door because of the, the grade. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've, we've got a decent sized deposit now and um yeah it's always a challenge right do you, do you start looking at economics now when there's still so much growth up in front of you uh but it doesn't hurt to start to look at some of that features that would be you know important to know whether it's going to be a five million ounce deposit or you know a million and a half ounce deposit we think it's going to be on the higher end right thank you very much uh, for joining us it's uh, uh, uh joe mizumda uh, metals investment former from the exploration insights with uh, darwin green ceo of high gold mining thank you very much darwin thanks so much joe so high gold mining just for you guys to sum up uh well-funded exploration in two different spots uh, and a, a major catalyst coming up with the mineral resource estimate update at jt deposit thanks again for joining us we'll see you later